il ventennale della scoperta del top e il giorno dopo siamo pronti con un seminario che ci racconta le meraviglie di questa particella. Questo incastro è venuto in maniera più o meno provvidenziale, ma tutto sommato con una serie di rimandi e rilanci siamo cascati proprio a fagiolo. Detto questo, eh, vi presento brevemente il relatore, il dottor Luca Lista, primo ricercatore alla sezione INFN di Napoli, che ha un lungo, lungo curriculum di ricerca nella fisica sperimentale delle particelle elementari, essendo stato membro prima di L3, la collaborazione che analizzava gli eventi di LEP al CERN, successivamente a Babar e ora è membro della collaborazione CMS. In tutte queste collaborazioni ha rivestito ruoli di responsabilità sia sul lato più propriamente fisico, essendo convinor di svariati gruppi dedicati all'analisi, per ultimo l'analisi degli eventi di produzione di single top a CMS che ha fruttato una prima osservazione del fenomeno in canale S, se lo ricordo bene, e in aggiunta a questo anche una serie di ruoli di coordinazione su canali più tecnici tipo ricostruzione di muoni, eh, tipo lui è stato praticamente l'artefice del, della struttura del calcolo de, di analisi dati a Babar e ora ci racconterà eh, la storia, più che la storia, le ultime recenti scoperte e sulle proprietà che caratterizzano il quark top. Grazie Franco dell'introduzione, per me è un piacere aver ricevuto questo invito e appunto un'occasione English is better? Ok. So, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here in Padova with my CMS colleague and with some of, uh, of the Padova friends. I also collaborated in Babar, so we know since about 20 years at least. Ok, so uh, I will uh, talk about the uh, latest results in top physics and uh, I added at LHC because indeed the latest results, the most relevant one came from LHC. Teotron is still producing uh, results about top physics, but as you will see in a couple of cases, uh, LHC reached the same level of precision, so now is leading the, the scene in this area. So, uh, happy birthday to the top cork. Yesterday uh, was the 20th uh, anniversary of the discovery at Teotron. And uh, let's introduce briefly what uh, is the role of the top cork in the standard model. So the standard model um, has uh, several particles you know very well, and I depicted uh, each one as a ball whose size, every particle in the standard model is point-like, of course, but I just for a display uh, have put a ball whose volume is proportional to its mass. So you see the top is by far the heaviest particle, uh, heaviest of all the other corks, and also heavier than the uh, WZ boson and the latestly discovered Higgs boson. So it may play a special role in the standard model, we don't know yet, but this is a fact. It behaves differently from any other uh, particle we know in the standard model. So it is the heaviest particle, it is as heavy as a, uh, an, an atom of gold, and if we look at the structure of the Yukawa coupling, which uh, dictates how the uh, top quark and the Higgs boson couple, the coupling coefficient turns out to be numerically equal approximately to one. This is um, probably by chance, this is the largest coupling, uh, Yukawa coupling uh, available so far. Uh, <coughs> it is not known so far why uh, this is numerically equal to one. There is no even theoretical, theoretical speculation, but this may give an indication that the top mass and the Electroweak um, symmetry breaking scale may be related to each other. We don't know yet. Uh, anyway, uh, considering that this is heavier, the, the top quark is heavier than the W boson, um, this is the only quark that offers the opportunity to decay into a real W. So the top may decay into a real W and, an, and another kind of quark. Um, the lifetime of this decay can be computed and is uh, 0.5 uh, times. 10 to minus 24 seconds, which is about 20 times um, faster than the typical time it takes to uh, quarks to hadronize, to form composite particles. 
So for instance, in order to study the properties of the B quark, you have to look at the properties of B mason or uh, B baryons. For the top quark, this is not the case. We can have the unique opportunity to study the, property, the properties of a bare quark. Another uh, interesting reason which came out uh, recently to study the top quark properties is its role in the, uh, in the shape of the Higgs potential taking into account the correction due to the, uh, its interaction with the Higgs field. And if we uh, plot the Higgs boson mass and the top quark mass, um, assuming that the, the standard model validity can be extended up to the uh, Planck scale, uh, the point uh, in which the, the, the Higgs and the top quark mass lie in this plane uh, dictates where the universe lies in terms of the stability of the Higgs uh, potential. So you know the Higgs potential has a shape which looks like this Mexican umbrella here, but the presence of the top quark may distort it and may even distort it so that it bends back and brings to an unstable situation, which is this one. Fortunately, we are far away from here. But there's also the possibility that, there, that we lie as universe in a metastable state in the sense that there is a more fundamental stable um, situation which could be reached by uh, tunneling. And fortunately, the time it would take on average is much longer than the lifetime of the universe. This means metastability. And apparently, if the interpretation of this plot is correct, we are in this situation. So there is also interest to study properties of top quark in this sense. I sketch here just a brief um, timeline of the top quark history. So first of all, when the B quark was discover, discovered, uh, the top quark was uh, hypothesized as a um, isospin partner of, of the, the B quark to complete the standard model uh, three generation structure. Then um, direct search started to be uh, performed at uh, E plus C minus collider. And of course, the energy was not sufficient at that time. So only limit could be reached in the uh, upper limit on the mass of the top quark. Then, on the 90s, the lab, um, with its precision measurement of the electroweak parameters, uh, started to, um, to produce its result. And uh, indirect estimate of the quark mass from uh, electroweak correction to the standard model parameters, which in the case of the top quark are proportional to the square of the top quark mass, um, led to a prediction with some uh, broad uncertainty of what would have been the, the mass. And indeed, in 95, the um, CDF and the zero experiment at Fermilab discovered uh, top pairs at value of mass, which were compatible with the, um, the mass estimated indirectly from electroweak measurement. So if we look at, at history here, here we have the year on the horizontal axis. And first of all, we have the upper limits on the different colliders, the indirect search with the, from electroweak data, which are pretty uncertain initially, then the precision starts to get better, and also the measurement, uh, the direct measurement, uh, becomes a precision measurement. If you look at the timeline of the uh, CDF and D0 measurement, this spans a much narrower uh, interval in top quark mass. And if you look at today's um, summary plot from the top mass, we see that we just consider a very small window and the precision of the, of the measurement of top quark mass is now uh, of the order of 0.7 GV, as you can see as the CMS combination. So we entered the precision era in the uh, top quark measurement. OK, um, let's see how uh, top quark is produced at Hadron Colliders. So first of all, um, the most abundant production comes via a strong um, uh, production mechanism. So you can have either gluon fusion producing TT bar or quark anti-quark annihilating into gluon forming a TT bar pair. Uh, this is the largest cross section, as you can see here on this table, as if uh, for different um, energy in central mass. But there is also another interesting um, production series of production mechanism via electroweak diagrams. And you can see here the exchange of a double boson in the T channel, uh, in the S channel, or also via a production of the T top quark associated with the W boson. And uh, we have explored both uh, production modes, first at Eotron and then at LHC. Um, 
then we, after we produce the trop cork, we have to consider its uh, decay uh, products. And uh, um, since uh, we have seen that top decays into a W and another quark, uh, considering that the coupling of the, of the top to other quark is uh, strongly, extremely strongly favoring the decay into a B quark, so the uh, coupling to other quark is very, very small, we can assume that 100% of decay is T to WB in the standard model. <coughs> then we know the, the decay properties of the W, and we know that decay decays about 11% of times into each of the lepton uh, species and the rest into hadrons, then we can classify the uh, top events in uh, terms of the decays of the W. So for instance, if we consider um, uh, TT bar, we will have WWBB and the W then can decay either both leptonically, and we have the lepton event, or in lepton plus jet or holodronic. Um, in, um, uh, so in the, in the case of the decay of the W, we will have a quark which are not necessarily uh, B quarks, while the, the quark accompanying the direct top decay is, uh, must be a B quark for the uh, reason we have the presented here. VTB is, uh, is equal to basically one. Uh, so we have uh, a, so a set of peculiar ingredients in a uh, top event in uh, produced at LHC or Tevatron. So we have leptons, we have neutrinos, which uh, produces missing energy in the detector because neutrinos cannot be detected at uh, LHC or Tevatron. And we have different kind of jets, either from light quark or from B quark. This is how an event looks like. We have protons which collide and produce a top and anti-top, and then we have B quark plus a W, and the W decays either leptonically, as in this case, or into uh, quarks, as in this case. Now, if we want to reconstruct from the final state the uh, decay, we may have problems uh, because we uh, need to assign the right B quark to the right top decay. So we may have uh, combinatorial problems to reconstruct the, um, the final state. And this is a peculiarity which has to be addressed in the different analysis. How do we uh, perform um, uh, the analysis of the top coke? This is CMS, is the, the, the experiment I'm working on. And uh, uh, you see the bin line at the center of the experiment. And then the detector as uh, Atlas as a onion shape, more or less, with the cylindrical uh, inner tracking based on the sequel on detectors. Then we have a hadron calorimeter based on crystals, and then a hadronic calorimeter, all inside a superconducting magnet. Um, outside the magnet, we have the, the iron yoke of the magnetic field return, which is instrumented with muon detectors. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are not familiar with hadron collider, uh, we use uh, polar coordinates uh, at LHC, but we prefer to use instead of the polar angle theta, either the rapidity, which is given by this expression here, which is convenient because the Lorentz boost reflects into a translation in this quantity. And in case of massless particles or sufficiently uh, massless particles, massless masses uh, that can be approximated to zero, we can consider the pseudo rapidity, which is minus tangent, logarithm of the tangent of uh, polar angle divided by two. So this pseudo rapidity basically maps one to one the polar angle of theta. You will see plots depending eta or y in the next slides. That's why I had to introduce it. So a different particle interact in different way. In particular muons are the most penetrating particle and can be detected also outside the coil. And the other kind of particle produce peculiar signal in the detector. So they can be reconstructed in terms of direction of uh, momentum or energy. So we have a precise snapshot of uh, all or most of the particle which interact with the detector. So the only particle which we cannot detect uh, directly is the neutrino. The neutrino escape, so we will not um, measure neutrino, and we have to indirectly determine their presence because of the energy imbalance. Atlas is uh, similar to CMS, has just different technology for the various detector, in particular the outer uh, muon uh, detection system is not uh, embedded in the return yoke, but has a special uh, toroidal magnetic structure. So uh, there is a spectrometer, independent spectrometer, to measure uh, the, the, the muon momenta here. Here is a, a top candidate event as detected by ATLAS. So you see there is a TT bar going into uh, uh, a B jet, 
on one side, the bijector on the other side, and then we have the W that decay leptonically, one into an electron and one into a muon. So here is the event seen in uh, the XY plane or in uh, 3D, and what you see, first of all, is the presence of the leptons. So a muon is a particle which traverses the entire detector. Uh, an electron is identified instead in the electromagnetic calorimeter. And we have then groups of uh, hadronic particles which cluster together, uh, uh, identified as hadronic jet, which are the remnant of the fragmentation of the quark which are produced in the, uh, in the decay of the quarks which appear in the final state. Then there are two more information. If you look at the detail of the jets which are present here, we see that some of the track do not originate from the collision vertex, which is here, but they are displaced because they um, are produced by secondary decay of long lifetime particle. These are uh, B mesons, which are present in the fragmentation of the, of the B quark, uh, B quark uh, jets. And this, uh, the presence of secondary particle can be used to identify a jet as stemming from a B quark. This technique is called B tagging, and we will use this in the analysis. Uh, as I said, the neutrinos cannot be detected, but if there is missing um, energy in particular in some of the direction, uh, approximately in this direction, we can determine in the transverse plane the direction of the neutrino. In the longitudinal plane, this, this game does not work very well because there are missing particles along the beam line which cannot be reco reconstructed anyway. So we'll talk about missing transverse energy in particular. Okay, let's look at the first measurement that we can do on... Uh, um, top quark production. So first of all, we measure the uh, top anti-top cross-section. Um, this is a measurement which can be done early enough in the, um, uh, with the first collision data, and this is something that will, will be redone uh, as soon as we switch on LHC at 14 TV. Uh, and the most precise, th this measurement has been performed in different nodes. This is the most precise measurement that is available so far, and this exploits the dilepton channel. In particular, the channel where we have uh, one top containing uh, an electron in the final state and another muon uh, allows to uh, avoid the background due to Drellian processes, which uh, are due to Z or uh, virtual Z or virtual photon decaying into electron and muon pair. In this case, if you have different flavor leptons, you don't have this kind of background. And you, are, you remain with backgrounds due to um, the boson production, W plus, W minus, which contain real electrons, immunon plus neutrinos, and uh, Z or gamma decaying into uh, tau pair, where one tau goes to electron immune. So you have different processes which produce the same object in the final state. And a way to determine the, the number of TT bar events here is to look at the peculiar distribution of the different processes. In particular, if we consider the distribution of the missing transverse energy, and then the jet multiplicity, uh, this allows to disentangle the different processes. Here you see for uh, a number of observed jet equals zero, or at least one jet, you see the different distribution here. Here you basically don't have uh, much TT bar signal present, and you can disentangle the uh, Z to tau pairs from the WW background here. Here instead you see that the background is much smaller if you consider at least one jet, and we are dominated by the presence of the TT bar. A signal. So the, the yields of the different processes can be determined simultaneously. And from the number of events, we can determine the cross-section uh, dividing by the efficiency, because each particle uh, uh, is not detected at 100%, the acceptance, which is the fraction of events which lie within some kinematical and, ge and the geometrical boundaries, which are defined here. These are cuts on the momentum or energy, uh, transverse momentum of energy of the particle plus angular uh, cuts which uh, require that the particle fall within the detector acceptance. Then we have to correct by the branching fraction because we have um, W decaying into specific mode and by the integrated luminosity which measures the intensity uh, of the LHC. So at LHC uh, we integrated um, 20 inverse femtobars at 8 uh, TV and 5 inverse femtobars at uh, 7 TV. Uh, instead of measuring just these Cross, total cross-section, it is also possible to measure the fiducial cross-section. So the fiducial cross-section is the, uh, the same definition except that it's restricted to the, uh, to the um, uh, kinematic and geometrical uh, boundary. In this way, some of the theoretical uncertainty are not um, taken into account 
because in order to extrapolate to the entire file space, you need to do some assumption which rely on uh, a theory modeling, so on um, the Monte Carlo generator. Here you see the cross section measured for TT bar and for one of the background, in this case, WW, um, in the fiducial region and in the total phase space. And you can see that the agreement with the uh, theory prediction, which um, make different assumption on the part of distribution function of the, the proton, match reasonably, you see the uncertainty are up to here, with the, the, with the measured value within, uh, let's say, one and a half sigma, something like this. And this is the most precise measurement so far. Uh, there are measurements done by Atlas and CMS in different mode, and there is also a, col a combination, uh, an NHC combination, which uh, exploits the precision of all the different measurements, which is available here. And uh, we can also compare the measurements done at 7 and 8 TV with theory, and you can see that the measurements agree pretty much with the, the, uh, with the theory prediction. Uh, since we have uh, a lot of uh, TT bar event, because you saw here we have um, uh, thousands of events, even with a very tiny uh, selection, like in this case, we can study, uh, in particular, on events which are uh, more abundant than the lepton, in lepton plus jet, distribution of different uh, kinematical uh, quantities of uh, the top quark. And in order to study the distribution, we can um, perform the measurement of the shape we observe in data, remove the background, and correct by the beam by beam migration that we expect due to detector resolution to uh, uh, any other detector effect which uh, may uh, cause uh, one measured value on uh, uh, some observable quantity, in this case the PT of the top, to a different beam. So correcting by this, we end up with a shape that we can compare to the theory prediction. So this allows to do precise um, measurement of the shape, which can uh, be a test of perturbative QCD, uh, can enhance sensitivity to new physics because some deviation uh, may uh, occur in specific region of the, uh, of the spectrum of the different uh, observable quantity, and maybe indication of the presence of new physics. And also allows to uh, control in a very precise way and from data backgrounds due to, to top and to top for different processes like uh, Higgs uh, analysis or other processes um, beyond the standard model. So, um, for instance, this is a, a distribution that we measured in Atlas and CMS for the invariant mass of the TT bar system. Uh, you see that this falls uh, steeply over several order, orders of magnitude and matches precisely the prediction due to different theory model which are shown here in uh, gray or uh, green band. Um, on one side, we are happy to uh, have a theory modeling which describes uh, in a precise way the, uh, the, the data, but if we uh, had observed an excess, in particular on the large uh, side of this tail, this could have been an, indica an indication of a new resonance uh, which decay into TT bar uh, at high mass. Here you see that up to mass around uh, one and a half TV, we don't see deviation even at a couple of TV. Now, it, it will be important to study again this distribution at 14 TV because we will be able to extend this tail to much higher value and explore if there are possible resonances or uh, hints of any deviation, which may be an indication of the presence of new physics in this area. Also, if you look at other distribution like the rapidity of the TT bar pair, we see here that again we have a good match of the theory and, uh, and data. And here again, asymmetry in this distribution or distortion of some of the spectrum may be indication of new physics, which uh, according to different model may affect one or the other distribution. So there are many studies done here. I don't show all of you, otherwise it would be too boring. But so far we don't have indication of deviation from the standard model. Okay, let's move to single top, which is a topic which I believe is interesting also because, uh, I mean, I'm working on this also because it's, uh, um, it has shown up not uh, very recently, in the 2009, Tevatron observed the first uh, hint of a single top event, and as you see now, uh, LHC is taking over with the many precise measurements. So, um, first of all, this is an electronic top production, so it's a different produ production mode. This is a unique opportunity to study the WTB production at the uh, 
the WTV vertex at production. You see here, for instance, you have a W and a B quark which interact and uh, produce a T quark. The only other way to study this vertex is in the decay of the top quark, but there you are limited by possible new mediator uh, particles due to new physics, um, which um, should have a mass which is uh, uh, not too large than the top quark, otherwise the, uh, there would be negligible effect in the top decay. Here instead, we can, uh, thanks to the high energy in the central mass at LHC, we could uh, imagine that we have the production of new particles or new interactions, which enhance this production vertex, and we could have an effect which is visible here at the production of single top, but not visible in the top decay. So, uh, in particular, in the T-channel is sensitive to flavor change in neutral currents, which may occur here. The S-channel is also sensitive to new mediators. You see here there's an exchange of the W in the S-channel, which could be replaced, to a, replaced by a W prime or uh, charge Higgs or other new particles. And um, the study of the coupling vertex can also be done in terms of a measurement of VTP at, VTB at the production vertex, which is complementary to the measurement done in the uh, top quark decay, because in this case, you can um, have possible hints of, uh, for instance, presence of a fourth generation, which would not show up if the fourth uh, generation particle here is too heavy and uh, would not show up in the decay of the top quark. Okay? So, how we studied the uh, T-channel, so how we do we measure the, um, the cross-section first? The most precise measurement here is, um, um, has been done by CMS. And so here we have in the final state a single top quark which decays into uh, W and B. The W decays leptonically, so we have lepton and neutrino, a B quark, a light jet which goes mostly on the forward direction because here we have a exchange of the W in the T channel. And we have possible, possibly another soft B quark accompanying the event, but sometimes this is so soft or so um, forward in the direction that this is not uh, detected in the event. You can see here that the distribution of the pseudo rapidity of the light jet, the one which shows here, is very different uh, from the, um, the different background, which is W or Z plus jets here, the TT bar background, which uh, decays more sharply, and the, the T channel uh, single top uh, distribution instead is uh, tends to much higher values of the uh, pseudo rapidity. So you can see here that it is quite easy, since we have also a large number of events here, to disentangle the three processes. And, and in particular, the, the distribution of the background processes can be determined from control regions in data. So here we identify events which contains, um, contain two jets the light jets and the B jet, we assume that the third is not uh, detected, and one of the two is B tagged, okay? If we move to different categories, for instance, if we have three jets and two tags, we enrich the sample completely of a TT bar, and we can determine the distribution of a TT bar in a very pure sample. If we move to sample which have no B tag, we enrich the sample of, the, of W plus jet. So there's a way to perform the analysis completely in a uh, data-driven way, exploring data, and don't rely too much on simulation. And the result is shown here, so we have a production cross-section, which is measured uh, with the uncertainty which is less than, uh, than 10 percent, and you can see here the measurements at 7 and 8 TV compared to the theory prediction, which stick pretty well. Uh, here, some of the uh, main uncertainty are due to signal modeling, so to theory. And there's a lot of effort uh, going on on the theory community to improve the, the, um, the theory description. Uh, so this means that the generator uh, in, the, um, in, the, um, uh, in the modeling of this uh, uncertainty. So we expect that with time, we will have uh, improvement also on uh, this uncertainty for forthcoming measurement. If you look at the other channels, the, in particular the, the TW, the associated WT channel and the S channel, we see that there are, these are much rarer processes. And in particular, the, uh, we see that the large, largest background here is in red, here is in yellow, sorry for a different uh, coloring code. 
is due to TT bar because TT bar mimics very well the final state if we miss some of the, um, the, the, the particle you are looking for. Uh, the signal is the, the yellow here for the TW, and it's just the very small yellow component here for the S channel. Uh, so in order to disentangle as much as possible the signal from the background, there are multivariate te discrimination techniques which are adopted. So there are te these are techniques which take several uh, kinematical um, variables which have different distribution, but each one individual, individual is not sufficient to disentangle the signal from the background. And uh, the power, the discriminating power is put together with the machine learning techniques. The one which is most promising is called boosted decision tree, which is adopted in both cases. So while for the TW, we, uh, we have a sufficient uh, significance of the, of the signals. So we have uh, an observation with the 6.1 uh, sigma significance and uh, an uncertainty, as you can see, which is around 20%. For this channel, we still are limited and the significance is below uh, one sigma. Uh, so we can set an upper limit on the cross section, which is about two times the standard model uh, prediction. Anyway, this analysis is improving. We are combining also the T channel, and uh, I expect in the next months we will uh, show up an updated result. This is a summary of the cross section measurement done uh, at LHC for the single top. So you see the theory prediction. Uh, for the T channel, the TW channel, and the S channel. And you see the T channel is a pretty, a pretty precise measurement. The TW is not as precise. And for the S channel, we have just a big uncertainty band. Uh, the right plot also shows the atlas result, which, as you can see, are less precise for basically all the channels. So there is also one case, there are a couple of cases where there are combination, uh, for instance, the TW. And there is also a combination done on the T-channel, which has, been, um, has become obsolete because both experiments published new results. OK, once we have measurements of cross-section in single-top uh, event, uh, events, we can see that all these uh, uh, diagrams here um, have a VTB coupling uh, in, uh, uh, in the one of the points here, for instance, is the VTB for the T-channel. So the cross-section is just proportional to VTB squared. And we can uh, compute VTB as the square root of the measured cross-section divided by the theory prediction computing, assuming VTB equal 1. And um, here we have eight measurements. You can see that precision is very different. So clearly, the TW channel is not as precise as the, D ch as the T channel. And the most precise measurement come from CMS, and the, 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 there is also a combination of the 7 and 8 TV um, measurements, which uh, ranges, uh, reaches a precision of 4.1%. So here is in, in this plot, this is a combination of these two measurements. Just as an example, uh, the VTB measure from the decay of the top, so in TT bar pair, as uh, the ratio of the uh, branch ratio of T to WB divided by T to W and any kind of quark is much more precise, but as I say, this is a complementary measurement, which can only, is only sensitive uh, on the possible new physics and deviation from standard model in the decay, which is limited by the kinematical constraint of the top quark decay. For the a single top in the T-channel, as well as for what uh, we have seen for TT bar, we can start to study distribution. And here we have a few examples, which I plotted here. We can uh, give a look at the distribution of the lepton charge, so we can see uh, what's the difference between uh, anti-top and top. You can see that there are more top than anti-top. We can look at the angular distribution here. For instance, we will see this is the angle of the lepton in the W rest frame and the W in the top rest frame, which has a peculiar distribution, uh, which has to do with the top polarization. And we can also reconstruct the top quark mass, because we know uh, the lepton and the B quark uh, for momenta, we can indirectly determine the neutrino. So first of all, if we consider the ratio of top and anti-top uh, cross-section, which is this part here, the signal is in red, uh, since we have uh, two up quark in the proton and one d quark, we can expect that approximately the ratio is two. Indeed, this is not exactly true in, the, in theory because there is a, there are contribution also from uh, other uh, proton components from the C, gluons, and so on. So uh, you have different predictions uh, 
depending on the different assumption you do on the proton PDF. You see, you see different models give different prediction. And the, the precision of the measurements so far is not yet uh, sufficient to discriminate the different PDF model. Uh, so we have measurement uh, by APRAS at 7 TV and a measurement of CMS at 8 TV, which are shown here. So um, we need to improve the precision uh, of this measurement at 14 TV uh, and uh, hope to uh, attack also the, 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 the part of distribution uh, function. So in this, case, in this way, if we start to discriminate the different model, we could also provide an extra input to this part of distribution uh, um, models, which can then be retuned again to take also into account this single top measurement. Okay, uh, if we consider now the, the distribution of the angle I talked about before, uh, this constitutes a test of the parity violation in the standard model uh, uh, at the production vertex. So this is a, a unique opportunity to do a study of parity violation at the production vertex on a free quark, free in the sense that the top quark is not hadronized uh, when we study this. So the top quark um, uh, from the electric production in the T channel is 100% polarized due to this V minus A structure of the uh, charger current uh, present in the VTB vertex. So in the standard model, we assume that we, we, uh, we have a prediction that the polarization of top is one. If the polarization of top is one, then the, the asymmetry can be measured as the number of top polarized in, uh, uh, in, uh, um, in the direction of the uh, uh, consistent with the, with the beam line, I think. Uh, so this is the polarization of the top in, the, in this diagram. Okay, so depending on the, the assumption you, you do on the, on the plot, assuming the direction of the light quark, the top can be polarized in the same direction, the opposite direction. And we can measure the asymmetry uh, from the distribution we expect of this uh, uh, cosine of the angle of the lepton in, this, in the top rest frame. So if we have a fully polarized um, uh, top, we assume that we expect that this distribution is just a straight line. And in order to uh, come back to this straight line and compare this with the, uh, the theory prediction, we need to unfold the experimental result. In particular, the region at high angle corresponds to a lepton collinear to the light jet, which uh, would have given problem in the reconstruction. So this part is experimentally suppressed, and we need to recover this. The, the unfolding has been done, and we have a measurement of the polarization, which is 0.82 plus or minus 0.12 plus or minus 0.32. Combined electromion, here we have muon only. So we, we did a test of the standard model, and also in case of anomalous coupling, this could have been modified in the presence of new physics. Another similar study is done in TT bar. TT bar um, unlike um, single top, uh, have top quarks which are unpolarized because they come from, uh, um, from a strong interaction. But in the decay, uh, there is an uh, effect of the uh, parity violation which I mentioned before. So we have a polarization of the W um, uh, because of the, 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 the WTB vertex in the decay. So again, we can study different kinds of angles. So the angle of the lepton in the WS frame uh, uh, and the W in the top rest frame, so it's slightly different from the previous definition. Uh, and the, the distribution now depends on the fraction of longitudinally uh, right-handed and, uh, sorry, left-handed right-handed and longitudinally polarized uh, W. So if you have this distribution, we unfold by the um, experimental, uh, experimental effect and we compare with the with the, um, the distribution we expect from the different contribution, we can measure the three uh, contribution independently, assuming that the sum is equal to one. And then we can compare with the standard model prediction, and we see that we have a nice prediction. Also, the precision can be improved if we do LHC combination. Um, we can also assume that there are uh, non-standard uh, coupling terms in the, in the Lagrangian, so we extend the Lagrangian adding uh, terms due to uh, new possible interaction. And then we see how much the data uh, can fit if we introduce some uh, of these uh, uh, anomalous coupling. And we can put limits on the space of the different couplings. And you can see that if this is the standard model, the limits are well within the 
uh, the standard model prediction. Okay, let's move to other properties of the top cork. So uh, one of the most important, as you have seen, is the mass, and the most precise measurement comes from CMS. This is done in the Lepton plus jet channel, so this is the event as you have seen before. Here we have, a, as I mentioned, the combinatorial issue because we have to reconstruct the, the top cork mass, putting together the right P with the right uh, W, and uh, this means that there will be multiple combination in the event. And uh, in order to exploit the best resolution, uh, there are two things which are done. So first of all, uh, there is a kinematic fit which uh, constrains the Ws on both sides to be equal to the uh, nominal W mass, which is known with very good precision. And uh, then we have different permutation, and we uh, can weight the permutation by the probability, the chi-square probability, uh, where the chi-square is the chi-square of, of the constraint uh, fit. In this way, instead of having a very broad distribution, which has a lot of combinatorial, also if we put the quiet cut on the minimum uh, chi-square probability of 0.2, we move from this, which is pretty broad, to this, which, which is very, very narrow. Uh, another thing that we can do, we can also measure the reconstructed W from the, the two quark decay. And here, if we don't put any constraint, we have a distribution which is uh, pretty much centered on the W mass. If there is a shift, this may be an indication of a uh, not perfectly corrected uh, energy scale uh, in the calorimeter. So we can fit simultaneously the top quark mass and the residual jet energy scale, um, which comes mainly from the W. In this case, this improves further the precision because uh, this jet energy calibration is done exactly on the same event which we are studying for the top mass uh, measurement does not come from external source which would require uh, extrapolation. So you see that we, we, we reach a precision level which is, uh, of, which is 0.76 GV, uh, sorry, which is uh, point, yeah, 0 0.70, 0 0.80 GV, which is exactly identical, or more or less, to the most precise measurement reached by D0 at Tevatron. So LHC reached the same level of precision of Tevatron, which took 20 years to achieve this kind of uh, result. See, there is still several contributions which can be possibly improved, and there are studies in perspective which, which say that this systematic uncertainty could be attacked with more and more data, more control sample, and more uh, analysis technique to determine the, the top quark mass. I want to show you also another measurement which is not as precise as um, as the one I showed before, but this is done in single top events. Um, in this case, Atlas uh, measures the, uh, the spectrum of the variant mass of the lepton plus B. This you see is pretty broad, it's not a peak because they don't consider the neutrino, but nonetheless, this spectrum is also sensitive to the top mass because different value of top mass shift the spectrum, so this can be used to reconstruct the top quark mass. And, uh, so far, the precision is limited, it's a couple of GV, mainly due to, to the um, jet energy scale, which is, cannot be constrained as in the previous case, and also more theoretical models. But the advantage of this technique is that the theory uncertainty are very different. In particular, what is so-called color reconnection effect, which is due to the way the remnants of the proton uh, interact each other because they want to uh, eventually uh, show up as a color singlet in the detector. Uh, these processes are very different in TT bar and in single top. So eventually, when the precision of this measurement can become uh, higher and more uh, under control, combining this measurement with the TT bar measurement uh, can bring further improvement because the systematic uncertainty due to theory, because of this effect, are uncorrelated, and the combination can bring down the precision. So this is still not uh, very accurate, but is promising. Here is the summary of the different measurements. You see there is a range of precision which is uh, very wide and uh, all, uh, basically all possible channels have been exploited. Uh, there has been a um, LHC combination and also a worldwide combination including, including both LHC and Tevatron. Here, the results of the individual experiment show up uh, faster than the top LHC working group uh, can uh, uh, keep up in uh, putting together the measurement into a combination. So uh, 
we need to update this combination also to take into account this latest uh, CMS result and possibly new that will show up in the future. Okay, let's move to uh, other properties of the top quark. <coughs> um, it, uh, angular distribution are interesting to study in general, and in particular, Tevatron studied in the past the so-called forward backward asymmetry, uh, uh, reporting some deviation from the standard model. What is forward backward asymmetry? At Tevatron, you have protons and antiprotons, so you can de define a forward and a backward direction. This is not possible at LHC. So what they can, can uh, see is whether the top are more probable to be found in the forward direction compared to anti-top. And this can be, um, can be defined as a forward-backward asymmetry. Uh, at LHC, we don't have a forward direction, but what we can do is to see whether the top are more probably produced in the uh, extreme uh, rapidity uh, direction with respect to a more central production. And this may show up if there are um, new physics and new interaction which uh, introduce this kind of asymmetry. Now, the two measurements are not really, uh, easy to relate each other because they, if there is the same interaction in the two processes, you cannot really expect the same magnitude of the effect because they enter into different uh, phase space uh, region. Anyway, uh, uh, while uh, at Tevatron, the standard model prediction is zero at the leading order, but can appear at orders alpha strong cube. And uh, historically, both the, um, the, um, the asymmetry was larger uh, in the data, and the standard model prediction was lower. So what happened more recently is this, uh, th this result. So as a function of the invariant mass of the top and the top pair, the asymmetry, you see, in the standard model, slowly goes up. So there is a tendency to go up, which was not expected at the leading order. And uh, while CDF has big uncertainty, but still not very far from zero, CDF has uh, a tendency to go up, up to the, uh, the, this bin, and then the last bin has such big uncertainty that covers everything. So, so far, I would say that the significance of this excess is very low. So the interest also is uh, not as strong as a uh, couple of years ago. And what was done at LHC is to study the, the distribution of the delta rapidity of the top and at the top, and you see that this is pretty symmetric. In Atlas, the same is in CMS, and uh, the asymmetry is expected to be on the order of 1% in standard model due to uh, interference of initial state radiation and final state radiation diagrams. And the both measurements are consistent with the zero in CMS and Atlas. You can see here CMS and Atlas, and it's also CMS plus Atlas combination, you see is consistent with zero, but the standard model prediction is 1%, not exactly zero, but still comp compatible with, the, with the, this data. So uh, the data cannot exclude uh, zero from this 1%. The precision is still uh, sufficient to cover both values. Anyway, in oh, this has also been done uh, differentially as a function of the TT bar uh, pair, and if there are new interactions, uh, uh, indeed, we would expect some enhancement of this asymmetry. This is, for instance, an example of uh, uh, axial vector coupling of the gluon, which is unexpected in the standard model, but the data do not give indication of a rise of this, uh, of this asymmetry. And it is possible in different scenarios to exclude large fraction of the uh, parameter space of these new physics models. Other example of uh, new physics measurement uh, done uh, with top are, for instance, the search for flavor change in neutral current in a single top production. And this may show up if there are new terms in the Lagrangian, like uh, coupling of the gluon to uh, up and T or to charm and T. This would be a flavor change in neutral current in the gluon interaction. Or also Z plus uh, Z UT and ZCT diagram. So Atlas studied the production of a single top with no accompanying particle. This is a, um, similar to, to single top uh, analysis, but uh, in a topology which is much simpler. And CMS studied the production of the single top associated to a Z. There's also a standard model process uh, of this kind, which is not accessible here, but could be accessible at 14 TV. Um, but this analysis was focused on this anomalous production. No uh, excess compared to the um, standard model prediction was observed, and uh, it was possible to set limits on the parameter of uh, the complement parameter which appear in this Lagrangian, which can also translate into 
branchy fraction of the T to this exotic mode, the GU, GC, and so on, with branchy fraction limit, which should go down to 10 minus 5, roughly. Okay. There are also searches for uh, very peculiar coupling, which introduce tensor structure, which could, can also introduce CP violation, but this is a peculiar analysis done by Atlas. So a wide range of new physics phenomena has been explored, and so far nothing new showed up. Uh, top is also interesting to study um, to study um, physics which, which is not necessarily uh, related to top work. Here, uh, this is a study of um, a single top production together with the Higgs. And uh, in, this, in these two diagrams, you see that you can produce a single top plus Higgs with the Higgs uh, being radiated either from the top leg or from the W uh, leg here. So in this case, you have coupling of the Higgs to the top and to the W. And in the standard model, these two coupling have an opposite sign. So the two diagrams interfere uh, in a destructive way. And the cross-section is very low. So if the coupling of the Higgs to the top or to the W would be anomalous, so there is a, a negative sign compared to the standard model, there would be an enhancement of this production mode. And uh, the, uh, the analysis at LHC could be sensitive to this uh, exotic Higgs uh, model. Analysis has been done considering both the decays of the Higgs into BB bar and to uh, photon pair. And so far, the best limits which are reached are of the order of eight or four times the prediction of the cross section with this anomalous coupling. So, and even far more um, uh, worse compared to the standard model case. But this analysis with the uh, 14 TV increasing central mass energy would be much more sensitive because we have a much higher uh, production cross-section. We expect a higher um, uh, integrated luminosity collected uh, with the new data. So we expect that the same analysis could, uh, in a relatively short time, exclude the anomalous coupling and start to probe the standard model uh, production of the Higgs together with a single top. At high energy, <laughs> including the present ATV data, there are regimes where the top quark is, uh, um, must be reconstructed in a spe with a special algorithm. If we consider top quark emitted at low PT, as I did so far, we can disentangle the B quark and the products of the W decay. But if we start to consider a higher and higher uh, transverse uh, momentum of the top quark, then we start to um, to observe that the decay product of W, or even of the entire decay product of the top, can be merged into a single jet. So in this case, uh, either one uh, gives up the reconstruction of the jet and try, tries to do a final reconstruction of the jet, which would anyway spoil all the other jet reconstruction in the event. Or there are special algorithms which then dig inside the, um, this so-called fat jet and start to look at some components start to prune uh, components which are considered uh, as extra, as radiation, and so on. And eventually, uh, depending on the algorithm, uh, have better performance to identify the W top and so on. This is, for instance, the uh, reconstructed uh, jet mass for one of the top tagger algorithms developed by CMS. So you can see a nice uh, peak around the top core mass. There are several of these algorithms which can be exploited um, already with the present data, and will be very, very useful at 14 TV, where the uh, higher energy range, in particular for searches for new physics, will require to study more and more uh, top, which have a merged uh, uh, structure. And so, as a, one example, Atlas uh, applied these um, boosted top uh, algorithms to uh, the differential um, cross-section measurement of uh, TT bar, uh, extending to transverse moment of the top quark up to uh, above 1 TV. And you can see that here we start to have deviation from the theory prediction, and having a measurement from data is important because you have to use this um, prediction in data as a, a background for new physics search, which uh, may depend on the, uh, events which contain TT bar in the final states. And another, other examples are the studies done in CMS of um, TT bar resonances. If you um, look for a distribution uh, of the TT bar invariant reconstructed invariant mass, also considering this boosted top, you can extend up to 
several TVs, and in case there is a resonance, you would expect a bump here. So far, there's no hint of a bump if we, ex if we don't interpret this as a, an excess, and we should not. And we can set limits up to a couple of TV of this hypothetical Z prime resonance. Uh, and this analysis, you see, is uh, crucially dependent on this reconstructed of the top cork using these boosted techniques. The same if we study resonances uh, of possible type W prime, where with W prime would decay to a top and a B, and again, the top is reconstructed in the boosted way, and we can extend the limit above 2.2 uh, uh, TV in the mass of this W prime. And that's all I would say. So after 20 years from the discovery, the, uh, the top quark field is still very active and very rich of new result. Uh, the LHC uh, experience reached very good precision in many, many measurements, which range from production cross-section, uh, distribution, top quark properties, including mass, and so far, uh, and so on. And uh, as you have seen, basically, the precision of the Tevatron after 20 years has been uh, reached by, uh, by LHC. Top can couple to um, new physics, but so far we have seen no deviation from any standard model prediction. So we have no indication of uh, uh, new physics even in, uh, in the top sector. But uh, as you've seen, advanced analysis techniques have been developed and, and are in place and tested, and uh, we are ready to exploit them in an optimal way in the forthcoming uh, LHC data, which will occur at 1314 TV. So we'll explore the completely new regime of energy. We hope that with the new uh, energy available and the higher intensity, we may have surprises. So stay tuned for the results that will occur in a few months from now. So Thank you, Luca, for this very exhaustive uh, panorama of uh, the status of top, top research. Are there are any questions? Yes, Cezia. Uh, thank you. Well, concerning asymmetry forward-backward of the top and the top, it could be I lost one logical because you told it in the Tevatron we can define the forward and backward region. And yes. in the LHC, we don't have forward and backward, but we can compare the uh, uh, pseudo-rapidity distribution of top and T top. But w when we go in the next transparency in the plot, you have a symmetry forward, you plotted a symmetry forward backward for LHC and for uh, Tebatron. So no. how is defined uh, in so this case? Here you have to do the difference in rapidity. So rapidity, um, if the top has a, uh, has a greater rapidity than the anti top, uh, you count as uh, forward, and here you count as backward. You do the difference in the absolute value of the rapidity. So if the top, uh, 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 if the two are more extreme or less extreme, uh, you count in a different way, basically. So here you look for a distribution where the top are on the right and the anti-top are on the left, okay? Yes. Here you look for, for uh, uh, the distribution where the top are more extreme, but yes. still symmetric. No, I, I, I understood this yes. transparency, this distribution. What I don't understand is how you can plot in the same, uh, in the same plot the, the two information in apps there. Here, this is uh, from Tevatron. This uh, is the zero, Tevatron. yeah, the zero and CDF. Okay, I understood yeah, yeah. that where also and this is some, LHC. No, some LHC are... data, all right. Okay, that's this fine. is just uh, Tevatron, so it's D0 and uh, CDF, and this is LHC. Understood, oh, sorry. It was not clear, sorry. Concerning the combination LHC and Tevatron for the mass, uh, it, it seems to me, maybe you just flash, that uh, you have um, some I mean, tension between the two, which are mm -hmm. well within the experimental resolution, yes. but uh, still uh, some tension. And it seems to me, at least on the right plot, the Atlas one, that uh, the, 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 the mean is the Atlas one, and then the, the error is just um, a bit uh, smaller because of the inclusion of the Tevatron. Is this something? Here, uh, 
Yeah. I, I think they took the world combination as a central value here. So the Tevatron only is a bit on the right side. Now, if we take the most precise CMS uh, combination and the Tevatron combination, there is a bit of tension. This is right. And also, if we consider that there is correlation in this uncertainty, this is close to a couple of sigma. So there is a possibility that some of the systematic uncertainty has not been uh, fully evaluated, uh, that someone has moved too much in an aggressive direction. We have to investigate. And one of these uh, activity on the top LC working group is also trying to harmonize the way the systematic uncertainty are estimated. So I agree with you. Yeah, th there is a bit of tension. Is this what you... As far as I understood, the, the most important um, uh, contribution to the systematics is still uh, the jet energy scale, I think. Is there yes, some yeah. plan to, to try to, I mean, just to look some uh, fully leptonic case uh, or uh, something like that in order to uh, try um, to look at the things in a completely different way? The, the fully leptonic uh, decays are yeah, the here. Dilepton is uh, is and you split. still don't have enough precision to compare with this one. So maybe if we move to more, uh, more, I don't know, to, 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 uh, to situation where we can keep better under control some further systematic in this channel, but I'm not sure how far we can move because we are dominated by systematic here. So we have to think about something smarter. There are ideas, I can move forward, to have independent measurements uh, and there are already alternative techniques like uh, endpoint spectrum instead of, uh, um, of uh, invariant matrix reconstruction, um, lifetime measurements, JPSI. These, the, there are also perspective on how this alternative measurement would improve with further luminosity at uh, LHC or high luminous LHC. And still they could be, uh, in the most optimistic scenario, better than one, one GV, but still the standard method could be, should be the better, so the best one. So at this point, uh, we have to see. I mean, if we end up with a very good precision, but then we, the, the individual measurements start to diverge, there must be some, uh, uh, something wrong with the, some evaluation of the uncertainty. So we have to be careful and try to uh, adopt uh, more controlled recipes for this kind of thing. Yeah, it was on the same subject, in fact. It is a comment, like a, more than a question. In fact, the, the, if you go back to the table with the measurements, it is not only correlated, but also the treatment of the average uh, uh, way. It is a bit uh, delicate because it, you treat all those correlations, and if you look at the combination tables, you... you, you you, you notice, you may notice that many of the contribution because of the statistical method which is used to combine is going negative contribution, yeah. which is uh, something that mathematically is acceptable. Uh, okay, they are trying to tell us that is also physically acceptable. To my mind, it's a bit harder to believe that you measure on one side and the result, the best result on the other side. So I think if you don't, if the community uh, does not find a way to attack the, the correlation and uh, the way it is, it is treated. Uh, you cannot get rid. You, you have different uh, measurements and uh, you are sitting in between, but uh, I don't know if you really can trust the error uh, very well. Yeah, we will see. Uh, indeed, I expect Tevatron will not move too much. Uh, probably they, they reached the... The, the best precision they could. We can possibly further improve with the 14 TV. Uh, we have Atlas, which also has room to improve because so far the precision in Atlas is still limited. And we will see whether others and CMS agree and uh, Tevatron is off or if there is a, something different. So far it's below a couple of sigma, so it, it may happen. But, uh, what exactly is going on at that level is hard to it's hard to say. Uh, just two, two uh, uh, curiosity. 
About the parton densities, uh, I show, uh, I see that you showed uh, a picture, uh, uh, that's it. Is this the only way that uh, uh, we can check uh, the different uh, sorts of functions, as far uh, as you know? This with single top, with TT bar, there may be way using differential cross-section, but I have not seen some uh, clear statement. Uh, so, so far, this is what I know has been considered as a, a possible way. Okay, and a maybe a related uh, things. Uh, you said that the simulation of IPT is, is not working so well. Is, is it a part of density problem? Or, I, I'm surprised because... Yeah, uh, this is something which indeed Atlas always finds. So they, uh, what is it? They have, um, uh, it may be due, at high PT you start to reconstruct the top quark with these booster techniques. Mm -hmm. So um, this is probably not a problem related to the matrix element evaluation, but maybe the way the um, uh, top tagging algorithm performs in the jet substructure. So this may be related to the way fragmentation of these high PT jet works. So there may be something to tune in the different fragmentation model. But this is a big bias. I mean, you, you, you yeah. have to understand that. You yeah, definitely, yes. Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, I have to say that I've not seen the, the same in CMS. And sometimes when Atlas finds a difference, CMS not, not always agrees. Let me see if I have, uh, no, maybe I have in the backup something. Um, ah, yeah. Here there are other examples where, for instance, Atlas uh, in the PT of the top, so this is not a boosted uh, regime, has discrepancies depending on the way you match the matrix element to the, mm -hmm. to the Hervig or, uh, yeah. and they find some discrepancy. In, in, in uh, CMS it's not always the same. So CMS is, uh, is here and at high PT we don't see that, that much of effect. So. It also depends on, where, on how, on details of the, the jet definition, we use different cone aperture in CMS and data, so there may be data, tiny details. Data sample, maybe? You don't have sufficient statistics to disentangle? Things. No, I think that the, the statistics is, is enough. Maybe it's the, the different way we run the algorithms, but it's, it's not clear. I mean, it is something which is still a question mark at this level. Other questions? Well, not. I would thank uh, Luca Lista again. <laughs> and I thank you again for inviting me.